Hello and welcome to your weekly pod here on Four Lads Had a Dream. My name is Andrew and I'm joined tonight by two of my very favourite podders. First of all, Kenny. How are you doing, mate? I'm good, Andrew. I hope you're well, mate. All good here. And uh, joining us is the pod overlord himself, Stevie. How are you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing good. It's um, nice to be on and probably a good time just to apologise, folks, for not being on the last few weeks. Obviously, I had personal stuff going on um, and it's it's good to be back and hopefully this will become a, a regular thing, Andrew. So looking forward to talking about Rangers. Absolutely. Um, it's, an, it's an interesting kind of time for us at the moment. We um, Obviously, the last time we did one of these weekly pods uh, was actually two weeks ago, just after the Ross County game where we were lamenting the fact that we'd had, I don't know, about 50 shots on target and yet only scored three goals. Obviously, since then, we've gone on, I mean, it, it's been a fair old roller coaster, uh, Kenny. We've um, beat St. Johnson 3-0, Hearts 5-0, got past Killy, which was always going to be tricky, 2-1, and then unfortunately slipped up against um, Motherwell. But nonetheless, at the end of that little run, we still find ourselves two points clear better goal difference than the team the other side of the city and uh, looking forward to two very exciting games coming up so how do you feel I, I, I guess Kenny first of all how you know how that past um, couple of games has gone you know we've we've got nine games left in the league now things still look pretty exciting right it very much is look uh, it was very disappointing Saturday we were all we were all a bit uh, mm. taken aback and surprised because I don't think many of us seen it coming did we but with hindsight, uh, having watched the game back, I thought we were we looked a little bit leggy. I look, we looked a little bit tired. I thought, um, but in saying that, on Saturday we had enough chances to win two or three games, Andrew. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm not that disappointed, oddly, uh, because the run can't go on forever. You, you, there, there will come a time when you don't play particularly well. But I said to you the last time we were on that I thought the next four games in the league were really kind of pivotal. Uh, and I'll stand by that, actually. I think that there's, there's a little blocks of fixtures that you look at and you think, we need to do this or we need to do that. Um, and to be honest, getting past the Hearts game, which was terrific, getting past Kilmarnock, which was a tough game, but we got there. Um, I'm quite happy with where we're at, Andrew. We're still sitting there uh, with it in our own hands uh, and with yep. plenty plenty to look forward to so yeah i cannot complain too much i've got to be honest no i think that's absolutely fair uh, stevie i think picking up on a point that kenny was making there in terms of the legginess i think what we're, tr- what we're starting to see now is the kind of effects of getting our players effectively kicked off the park recently um ross mccosland obviously with his uh, injury in the motherwell game which the manager made note of talked specifically about the player getting kicked off the pitch um I think we we have talked at length before about Phil Clement and what he has done with this squad of players, but it getting reduced in terms of size because of these injuries, um, that's got to be frustrating, right? Yeah, I think that's right. I would I would agree with what Kenny said about us looking a bit leggy, and that is a, a kind of a symptom of the squad being stretched, particularly in the wide areas. I think the the news of Cortez has been out for the rest of the season, more or less, or or for at least a, a considerable amount of time, is a huge blow as well, just as he was starting to look kind of decent. But it's just our luck, I think. And and on Saturday, and there's been a few mental gymnastics online and things <laughs> trying to justify what was really an atrocious challenge. And, and the, the worst thing about the boy winning the ball, Kerry, is that he wins the ball and he's, he's two seconds before McCausland gets there, but he still goes to ground and the studs and the contact is well after the ball is played. Ross McCausland's momentum to get the ball takes him to where he should be, but it should be, you know, there was no need for any collision because Ross McCausland isn't actually trying to win the ball. He's, he's nowhere near it. So, yeah, I mean, that was an extraordinary decision by not only the referee who had an atrocious game, one of the worst refereeing performances I've seen at Ibrox in a very long time, but we were fairly beaten by Motherwell, no complaints, and it's not an excuse for me. It's just what I would consider to be a fact of of Saturday's result, but I would agree. Sadly, McCausland was kicked off the pitch, and it's going to it's going to be tricky having to find out you know who plays wide and who fills the team in the next couple of games because it's not like we can rotate or rest that much because Benfica, Hibs, and then back to Benfica again is a hell of a run of tough opposition. I think that's right. Um, obviously, we've seen Sterling come in and play quite well out there, Kenny, but <clears throat> I think it's uh, it's difficult to ask him to continue playing 
despite you know whatever football manager might say at this point um it, it's not i think his first choice of position let's say that and you know continuing to to play him out there consistently when the manager has spoken so often about wanting to keep players fresh wanting to rotate and um you know keep the squad ticking over it is going to be tricky that being said i think you know when we were looking down the barrel of having lost the season back in october of last year I, I don't think many people have predicted us to be in this position where we have one trophy in the bag, we are still in three more competitions, and hell, we're at the top of the league as well. So, you know, I, I think as frustrated as we were with the Motherwell result, obviously given results elsewhere, and the fact that we have looked so competitive, I think from that perspective, at least for me, it's been a lot easier to just write this off as it's just one of those games where nothing worked for us, none of the players were at it. These things can happen. I don't think it represents a trend based on the 11 games prior to that and how well we've played in some of those. So I guess my question, Kenny, is um, do you do you agree? Do you think that is just an aberration? Do you think we can you know, get back on course? Is Benfica really the best game that we can have to, uh, to bounce back? Um, you know, what's your take? Yeah, I think it is, actually. I'll tell you why. I think... Uh, you're talking about, the, you know, out wide and who we're going to put out there. I, I, strangely enough, I don't think it's going to matter too much on Thursday night because we'll need a little bit of pace. So it wouldn't surprise me if he starts with Scott Wright. Um, whoever else he plays, I, I'm not quite sure. But we are going to not have a lot of the ball on Thursday. So I'm not too concerned about that. It will be a more defensive structure that we, we play with. Uh, do I think it's an aberration? Well, the proof will be in the pudding, Andrew, but I do think so, yeah. I think it's just one of those games that you get. Stevie will tell you from the first minute, I just thought we were off it. I, we just didn't look um, confident or comfortable or whatever the word is. But, um, you could, you you know, it's football, Andrew. You get games like that. Where, and to be fair, I've got to be fair to Motherwell, they... They came with a game plan and they isolated our, our defenders very, very well. The, the amount of times they got one-on-one with defenders was uh, surprising. But they came with a game plan. And I, I, I believe that uh, Kettlewell had went down and watched us down at Command Look. So he's maybe pinpointed a couple of things uh, that will stand us in good stead going forward, Andrew. So in, in short, is it an aberration? We'll wait and see. The Benfica games will take care of itself. Uh, and the Hibs games are um, massive for us. So, you know, Hibs are much more open than we we are used to them being. So, yeah, I'm I'm quite confident, Andrew, I've got to be honest. Okay. Can I just yeah. say on that, um, Andrew, sorry. I think Kenny's right, but I think that we can't look too much into the Benfica game. I think all I'm kind of looking for in that is that we put in a really good performance and that, you know, we can take something from it performance-wise, I'm not necessarily expecting us to beat Benfica because I believe that Benfica are a Champions League level club. I think that we're under strength, but I think Kenny's right. I've got to be honest with you, as long as we come through Hibs on Sunday, whatever happens in Benfica I can handle, unless of course it's a it's an absolute drubbing. I think that we'll go on from that and I don't think that any questions regarding the squad or, or the manager or anything is fair considering how well they bounce back with 11 straight wins after the Celtic defeat. So, I'm with Kenny on this, that I, I believe it's just one of those games. I think we had enough opportunities to win two games. I think that Kenny's right. I think Motherwell spooked us a wee bit, lads, because they actually won the kickoff, took the kickoff, and we never got settled. So um, I think that that basically contributed, and we didn't we didn't just react to it. So I'm interested to see how we're going to respond. But for me, if we do get beat home and away by Benfica, then I don't think that that's something to overly worry about if we come through the Hibs game. If we don't come through Hibs game and this becomes a 2-3-4 game run, then that's where I would, would possibly get start to get a wee bit slightly worried. But as long as we do all right against Benfica and come through against Hibs, then I'm quite happy with where we are at this moment in time. In fact, I'm overjoyed. And if you had given me that um, a couple of months ago, I would have bitten your hand off with it. I think that's right. Um, we, we look at where we were and where we are now. There's undeniable improvements. I think Phil Clement, barring a complete disaster in the in the last half of this half, is going to have at least next season to kind of 
prove his metal. I think he's already done that in terms of demonstrating what he can do with this squad, um, what he's managed to get out of them, uh, a squad that I think the vast majority of Rangers fans, especially watching them under Michael Beale, did not think was anywhere close to a title challenge. The fact that they're now sitting top of the league is phenomenal. Um, and a lot of credit goes to Plamont for that, in my opinion. In terms of that Hibs game then, um, setting aside Benfica for now, um, this obviously represents a big step in terms of getting towards yet another bit of silverware. Um, we have this game to get through at Easter Road, which is a ground that, you know, knock on wood, we've had a good record at recently. I'd be hopeful that we can do the business there. Hibs, you know, have not exactly had their troubles to seek in terms of their own form, but they are still a top six team. They do still represent somewhat of a threat. But I think the game, Kenny, suits us quite well in terms of how they will set up and play against us because they do tend to open up. They do tend to play quite, I don't know if aggressive is the right word, but certainly a lot more open in terms of how they set up. So I'd be hopeful that as long as we can get through this first tie of Benfica, that we can um, we can comfortably secure uh, passage to the, uh, to the semi-finals of the Scottish Cup. Yeah, but look, the Benfica game for me on Thursday is about staying in the tie, you know, to, to kind of take, uh, go with what Stevie was st- saying there, you know. Um, that's my take on Thursday. So, uh, Sunday's the bigger game, actually, for me, in the sense that domestically is where our bread and butter is, uh, and it's another great opportunity to get to Hamden. Um, and it's a one-off tie. It's got to be one on the day, and I'm looking forward to that actually i'm looking forward to the next week uh the, this break has came um uh, you know from lead the league campaign is coming at a good time for us uh the benfica games are a distraction but they're a very you know lovely uh distraction that actually the big big game benfica and rangers it, it's just got a, a ring to it um the hibs game for me is uh, I'm, I don't like saying that, you know, but I'm quite confident that we'll go there and they are so open and because it's a cup tie, I expect it to be an even more open, uh, an end-to-end kind of game. Uh, I've noticed that with us, with uh, Philippe Clement, that we're quite open as well. We're quite prepared to let football just be like a little bit of a game of basketball at times. He's got total faith in, in our players to do the job that he's asking them to do. So, yeah, I, I think the Hibs game is is a big one for us, and I, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how we go how we go with the injuries we have. But I'm fairly confident. I've got to be honest. I, I'm not overly concerned about it. I'm just thinking that the the two week break f- from the league with uh, our main rivals dropping points, they've got to sit during that, and we've got a wee uh, bit of light relief over the next week or so. Yeah, on that, I mean, we obviously have this double header with Benfica, the Hibs tie. We got Dundee then, and then we go into an international break. So, obviously, I don't think any of us are major, massive fans of that international break, but the fact that we've still got a couple of weeks more in terms of getting some of the rest of the squad fit and recovered and healthy against Stevie, I mean, that can only stand us in good stead. Um, I know that some of our players are likely going to be out, as you say, Cortez, for one. Probably going to be out for the majority of the rest of the season. It remains to be seen how quickly he can recover. But we do have players who are, I think, closer to coming back. Uh, Todd Cantwell is one who I suspect will be doing everything he can to get back in the picture. But in terms of some of those resources, Stevie, um, who who would represent you know the, the kind of biggest impact in terms of being able to come back fit and firing? Yeah, I definitely think it's Todd, isn't it? So he's the one that we all want back and we're putting a lot of pressure on him, but we actually need some wingers back as well. It's vitally important, I think, Rabi Matondo returns in the next couple of weeks, even just for options-wise. I think mm. then you're looking at, is there an off chance that Sima could maybe be back towards the end of the month? I think that's a reasonable thing. Clement says he's back on the grass this week. If he's back on the grass this week... Kenny, four weeks maybe on the grass. You know, I don't think that's a million miles away from being. Is the Hibs game realistic? You know, on the thirtieth at the end of the month. These are the players I'm looking at. I don't think we see Danilo until May. I don't think we see Dowell until next season, perhaps. Cortez, if we're lucky, maybe May, and then we need to wait and see what's happening with him. McCausland, I'm hopeful that it's just a bruise and maybe a week or so. 
But yeah. I think that's, if I'm looking honestly, Kenny, I would say, and I would fire this to you, I would say immediately, next few weeks, Matondo, Cantwell, and then maybe end of the month, Sima is, is where I'm hoping. And that's not based on anything. Like if people are thinking that that's inside knowledge or that is definitely not. Rangers do not discuss injuries with anybody, let alone myself. So um, that's only what I'm gathering from what the managers and that have said. I would actually think that if Seema's back in uh, the grass this week, I think he said Monday, actually, so he'll be, but he already have started uh, training on his own on the grass. Um, I think the, the last couple uh, of players that, that, that that's happened with under Clement, they've been in the squad within about a fortnight. Now, they're not starting, obviously. They're only getting 15, 20 minutes. So maybe a little bit different with uh, Seema because he's been out for so long. But I'm quite confident that some of these guys will be a little bit closer than you know we're fearing. Uh, put it that way. Is there anybody think, else? Um, sorry, is there anybody else that we're missing? Because it seems like such a long <laughs> kind of list. It seems like uh, such a big list. Am I missing anybody else out, or is Lawrence, that the main ones? Lawrence as well. Tom, well, Tom's fit, isn't he? But he just needs to kind of be. Yeah. You know, kind of. Ben Davis is the one, isn't it? Well, Ben's on the bench all the yeah. time now at the moment as well, so he's fine. It's it's whether or not you know that that he decides yeah. to go with them. So Ben Davis is in the European squad. It'd be interesting to see if Balogun would come back in against Hibs. I'd probably think that I would be tending to go towards Balogun. Yeah, um, we, we know and, we can't so, we know we can't play Balogun in the um in the Benfica games because obviously yeah. he'll he's not within the squad. But, no, but for but Hibs see, I would be looking yeah. at maybe bringing him in. So there's a few and options there definitely. But I think wide players we need back guys desperately. Yeah. Seema potentially coming in as an option for the second round of the Benfica game. That's very early, obviously, but I mean, he'd be a hell of an option to have sick on your bench. Um, that'd be very exciting. Um, obviously, you know, we, we like to keep things quite short and sweet around here, so I'm going to start wrapping up. But I think in terms of what we're looking ahead towards, we'll obviously have the Benfica and the Hibs games uh, taking place. Stevie, I believe that you will be having your uh, traditional post-match uh, pods that will be released uh, kind of same day, um, hopefully as long as we've got a good result in the games. No, actually not. Uh, I am. Oh, OK. Uh, next time we are podding will be probably this time next week when we review the... Benfica Hibs game and look forward to Benfica at home. So I'm not actually at any of the the next coming games. I didn't go over to or I didn't choose to go over to Portugal for the Benfica game. It's just come too soon for me. And mm-hmm. Hibs on Sunday, I believe that Shona is going to cover for us. So it's her first game on her own. So we wouldn't be expecting her to do a match pod, but she will be updating socials and keeping us up to date what's going on. I I am working so. <laughs> no pod for me at the moment but um, Benfica is the next match day pod at home and then we'll be here guys next week to, to review what's hopefully been a good few days for the club hopefully hopefully yeah um, well we'll look forward to hearing from Shona obviously uh, after the Hibs games and then yeah we will talk to you uh, a few days after that uh, both of you gents it's been a pleasure obviously Kenny I'll come to you first but thank you mate for coming on always a pleasure to chat Rangers with you yeah, it's always great. Thanks, Andrew. And uh, Stevie as well. Thank you very much, mate. Um, appreciate you giving us this platform. You don't need to apologise in terms of any absences. Like, you know, you've been doing plenty of work for the pod anyway. But um, thank you again for coming on uh, this evening as well, mate. It's much appreciated. No, absolutely. Um, we'll get these regular. And just a thanks to everybody that's listened and subscribed and that we have got quite a few thousand listening regularly and there's quite a few thousand of subscribed so if you're thinking about subscribing please do because it really helps us and we really appreciate the support and Andrew on behalf of Kenny and myself thank you as always for hosting that's not a problem at all uh, one of these days I'm going to convince Kenny to get into the hosting chair and I can <laughs> take it easy instead but we'll see how we get on you'll need um, to teach me Andrew <laughs> it's not easy I mean, well I was going to say it's definitely easy because I can do it so trust me you can as well um, gents uh, again it's been a pleasure and to everyone out there listening I'd just like to echo what Stevie said uh, thank you for listening your support means everything to us we do encourage you to subscribe like share all of those good things um, it's been a pleasure so until we talk to you again bye for now
Four Lads Bite Size Podcast is exclusively sponsored by Rhino Express in association with Zenith Coins, Alexander Candle Interiors and Wrenchers Pools. Please don't forget to drop us a like and a follow if you enjoy all our content and if you're listening on a podcast channel, please subscribe as it really helps the podcast grow. We hope you enjoyed the show. Bye for now.